Hello and welcome to part three of this 10 part series on cage chords and arpeggios. If you haven't seen the other two short videos yet, click on the card above and that will take you to the videos on major and minor arpeggios. So now what we're gonna do is start taking a look at seventh chords. So okay, so we're gonna look at major seventh chords first, major seventh chords and arpeggios first. So a major seventh chord is built up of a root note, a major third, perfect fifth, and a major seventh. Okay, so it's always good to kind of work out the notes of the arpeggio or chord before you play it, so you've just got a deeper understanding. Okay, so major third is two tones in size, perfect fifth is three and a half tones in size, and major seventh is five and a half tones in size, but a quick shortcut is go down a semitone from the root note. So what we're gonna do is um, play D major seven. So the four notes of a D major seven chord would be a D, and then an F sharp, which is two tones above D, then an A, which is three and a half tones in total, or one and a half of F sharp, and then go down a semitone from D, and that gives you that kind of that C sharp note, which is your major seventh. So it's really good, especially when we go on to minor seventh and dominant seventh arpeggios, three of the most common seventh chords you will see in millions and millions of songs. Okay, so what we'll do first is we'll go through the C, A, G, E, and D shapes, and the open shapes first. So C major seven. <laughs> Okay, so C major seven, open shape, common shape, just to play a C major chord, take off your first finger. So that's third finger, third fret A string, middle finger, second fret D, and just strumming from the A string, okay? So you can see here, basically what you've got is you've got a C, E, and a G, and the open B string, which is that major seventh note, and then obviously you have duplication. So two E's here, uh, one C, uh, the G, and the, and the B there. Of course, that's C major seven. And then you've got an A major seven. Okay, so open A string, middle finger, second fret D, first finger, first fret G, third finger, second fret B, and then the open E string. So what happened here, you've got this G sharp note is this extra note on top of what we call a major triad. So that's a G sharp there. That's an A major seven. And then we've got G major seven. So you can play it with your first and second or, or second and third. Really nice open chord, middle finger on that F sharp there, which is the major seventh note. Block the A string, third finger, third fret, low E string there. Okay, and then we've got E major seven. Not a very common open shape, this one, but when it moves up the neck, really nice jazzy kind of sound, sounds amazing. Okay, so what you're gonna do here, uh, you're simply just gonna play the open E, so I would probably would never even use this open shape, but when we move it up the neck, which we're gonna do in a second, it's really useful. So open E, uh, then uh, little finger, second fret D, which is the major seventh note, which is this uh, D sharp. Then third, and then little finger, first fret of the G, which is the major third. And you got the perfect fifth, which is the open B string. So again, not very practical open chord shape, just sounds, a lot of people might play it like that. But uh, yeah, when, when you move that shape up the neck, it sounds fantastic. So that's E major seven. Then common D major seven chord. So that's open D, bar the second fret, G, B, and E strings there, just with your first finger. So now what we'll do, in order to kind of uh, play these arpeggios and chords in every key, we need to know how to take those open chords up the neck, okay? So this was your C major seven. So now what you wanna do is play that with your little and third fingers, and imagine visualizing blocking off the open, uh, open strings there. So that's your, now your shape that you can move up the neck. Well, we're gonna do it in the key of D major first. So we're just gonna move that up two frets, C. So your root note is that one there. C, C sharp, D major seven. Really nice chords. And you, you know, you'll find bands all the time use sort of different voicings just to spice things up. So this is D major seven in the C shape. Okay, and then we'll do the same thing with A major seven. So we need to free up our first finger because we need to close off this open A and E strings. So play that middle, third, and fourth fingers. That will allow you to block off that open kind of strings, A and the E. So you can move that up, and then the C and the A shapes have exactly the same root note. So apart from the fifth fret, third finger, seventh fret D, middle finger, sixth fret G, little finger, seventh fret uh, B. You can find this kind of type of chord in Under the Bridge. Again, it's a very common chord, really sounds amazing. So, D major seven, okay? So that's the A shape. So, 
A major, open the shape, and then move it up the neck, okay? So really good to do it in this kind of order is really useful. So now we're gonna take the G shape. So the G shape, we're gonna do it slightly differently because if we were to play that full shape, you'd have to play it like this, which is a bit impractical. Okay, so you'd literally have to play it like that because you've got to block off the, the D, G and B strings. And it's just not, it's not very practical. So what most people tend to do is just use the top half of that chord, which is that bit there, okay? So again, the root note was there. What I like to get to people to do is think of this as what we call an inversion. You're not actually starting from the root note, but the root note, if you wanted to find it, it's just on the G string. So you can take that's the shape we're going to use. Again, you can see that from the diagram where our chords in green uh, appear, okay? So you can really fix everything, link everything together. Our eyes are, are really useful for mapping out the neck um, and just really good. So this, this will be D major seven, because our D note is on the G string. If you wanted to kind of visualize what, how it compared to the open shape, think about, you've got to go one up from your, where your third finger is there, and that's your root note. Or again, this is the major seventh note, that's C sharp and that's D. Really nice bright sounding. Uh, chord there. So that's D major 7 G shape. Okay? It doesn't really look like a G shape, but I'm going to call it a G shape. Okay. Uh, and then don't forget with those diagrams um, here, we've got all the different uh, intervals. Again, so we've got, if you look at the first one, that C shape, for example, you've got three and five. You know, so the idea is you, you're, you've got all the intervals there in those diagrams. Okay. So that's the G shape. So we just took G major 7 open shape. <laughs> then stripped it down to make it more practical, practical to play. Let's play it with our first. We're gonna be barring from the D string. And your root note is actually on the G string. Okay, let's now take the, that E shape. So the open shape, zero, one, one, zero, block the A string out. You're now gonna use your first fingers to block off the low E, middle finger to block off the B, and then move that so your root note is now on that D. Really nice common kind of jazzy chord. It's a really nice um, uh, alternative voice. And again, if you've got, you know, if you've learned all five shapes, you've got more options. Uh, and when you're learning a song, when you'll be able to pick up, well, actually, that sounds a bit brighter. It might be that chord. So, so that's D major seven there. I also get people to think, oh, it look, looks a bit like an A minor chord there with your root note first finger on the same fret as your middle finger. So that's D major seven uh, in the E shape. And then we've also got, we've got that chord there, but for the purposes of our arpeggio, we're gonna play that. So if you have your first finger, if you were doing it in other keys, you'd use your third finger, visualize blocking off the open string there, and then move that up. So we're gonna start on the 12th fret instead, just for the purposes of the arpeggio. So just to recap, then the five open chords and then we're moving them up the neck. So C major seven uh, turned into D major seven and then A major seven, that A shape turned into D major seven in the A shape. G major seven turned into D major seven G shape. The E major seven turned into D major seven E shape. Uh, D major seven here, which is the D shape turned into same but uh, an octave higher than 12th fret. Of course, cool, so now we can take a look at the actual arpeggios. Okay, so again, you've got those chords there in green. So the idea is what I get people to do, play the, arc the chord first, then play the arpeggio, and then finish on a root note, or ideally the chord. And that way it just reinforces it. Okay, so you're just really mapping out the neck, learning your notes on the neck. Great for a given, you know, giving you different ideas for solos and or riffs, you know, the, the arpeggios, are, you know, you can see them all over, you know, rock and pop music. So, so if we take a look there, so the, the numbers in the boxes there correspond to what fingers I would recommend you play. You don't have to use these fingers. They're the ones I like to do. So some of the white dots will be root notes, but there are other root notes, uh, you know, that are in the chord. So if you see a number, with an R, that basically means that's the, the finger I want you to play, plus it's also a root note, okay? So you've got two or three root notes in the arpeggios, really useful to remember these. Um, 
And these are uh, the fingers that I recommend, but you don't have to use those. It's just my personal uh, recommendation. So as long as it's consistent and you're, there's a reason for you, you know, using those particular fingers. So, so this one here, yeah, the root note is that fifth fret of the A string. And you can see there by the diagram, the major third, we're starting on that F sharp. And then we've got the A. So again, you're just using these four notes, D, F sharp, A, C sharp. So all of these, you're not gonna use any other notes if we're playing in the key of D. So little finger is your root note. So we're gonna start F sharp, uh, second fret low E. So again, you're thinking about where you're starting the arpeggios in relation to the chords as well. So it really helps them out at the neck. So you're gonna go two, five in terms of frets, four, five, four, and use the first finger, two, then two, three, two, five. Five, two, three, two, two, four, five, four, five, two. And again, you can see the fingers I'm suggesting, yeah. First, little, third, little, third, first, first, middle, first, little finger. Really sound nice. Some little, some really cool kind of riffs and, and melodies you can create out of these. Okay, so that's the, the C shape. Okay, and now you can do the same thing. We play the A shape. So play the chord first, um, and then here, so for example, we're starting on the perfect fifth. Okay, so middle finger, uh, fifth fret, low E, and then first finger, and then third finger, first finger, third, middle, third, third, first, third. Third, middle, third, first, third, first, middle finger. Okay, so it sounds really nice. And you're just doing one note after the other. Some strings will have two on, some will just have one. Just the nature of the way the guitar and the way where you put your fingers. So, yeah, the idea is these arpeggios, you're playing all the notes of that particular chord, D major seven, in this in a particular sort of zone of the neck, okay? Um, so that's D major seven, A shape, and now we're gonna take G major seven, G shape. D major seven, G shape. So again, practicing your chords first might be really useful if you're new to arpeggios, maybe go through the chords, memorize them first, then do the arpeggios later. Um, so this is a G major seven uh, arpeggio. Okay, so you're going to start off uh, on the major seventh this time. Okay, so our first arpeggio started off on the major third and the F sharp. Second one started on the fifth. Now we're starting on the um, major seven, which is the C sharp. It's going to go nine, ten, nine, seven, eleven, ten. Uh, sorry, uh, seven, eleven, seven, seven, ten, nine, ten, nine, ten, seven. 7, 11, 7, 9, 10, 9, and then finish off with the chord. That one kind of... So good to kind of just obviously relate to where the root notes are as well, really useful uh, for just your overall guitar kind of playing. So again, you might, when you're soloing or creating riffs, you might not use all the arpeggio, you might just use parts of the, of the uh, arpeggio that sounds really nice. So that's the G shape. And now we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna take that E shape, okay? So we're gonna start, again, think about where you start the arpeggio in relation to the root note. You're gonna start here on the major seventh again. So you're gonna go nine, 10, nine, 12. Again, be conscious of the fingers that I've recommended to keep it nice, nice and organized. Nine, 10, nine, 12, 11, 12, 11, 10, 9, 10, 9, 10, 11, 12, 11, 12, 9, 10, 9. Finish with the chord. And then we're going to do the same thing again now with a D shape. Now we couldn't play that down here because this, the arpeggio just doesn't fit because of the, the notes. We've got a C sharp and we've also got a, um, an F sharp as well. So yeah, it wouldn't fit. So let's just start it up here. So here's one here. Again, you might want to change your fingers depending on where you are on the neck because sometimes you lose, uh, you know, there's not much space. But um, this start the the fingers I've suggested. So little finger, middle, third. Oh no, so little, middle, uh, and then third or um, or second finger there. 
then first finger, and then what I like to do is slide it up to the 14th fret. You can see there, I've got the first finger there, then go to the 14th fret, then use my first finger and barred that kind of D major shape there. Then I hit the B string. I like to hammer on or pick it. 15th fret of the B, 14th fret high E. nice melodies going on there and then finish on the chord cool so what we'll do is we'll do um, obviously the idea here is to practice this in lots and lots of keys okay so if you think of just the you know the, the notes of the new school alphabet you've got kind of 12 keys in the circle of fifths practice them in every single one yeah and then work out what the first available shape is on the next so say if we did B major B major 7 our first available B major 7 chord out of the five shapes C A G E D would actually be an A shape Okay, you couldn't really fit the C shape in there, so it's really good because otherwise you're just only going to start, you know, from the your first shape that you know or where the first B is. So, really, this is the idea behind this: is learning everything, you know, all over the neck. Okay, um, so the A shape, and then it will go to the G shape, and then go to the E shape, and then go to the D shape, and then go to the C shape and it would just keep going. So it's really good to be able to just rattle off all those different chord types and be able to do the arpeggios as well. So let's just go through that again, so with B now. Uh, again, obviously the, the frets are thicker down here than they are if you're playing you know, right up here. The shape will feel a little bit different, so it's really important to practice the different keys. So let's go for this then. Again, just be careful, be conscious of where all the root notes are what fingers to use, be nice and consistent, then the G shape. B major 7 G shape there, then the E shape. And then the D shape. Really nice, I really like that one. Again, you don't have to use the fingers I've suggested, but I like, to, you know, I just find those work really well for me. Um, again, the key is to be consistent. And then finally, on look at the C shape, because we've done A, and it follows the letters in the word cage. A, G, E, uh, D, and then C. There's lots of ways of playing arpeggios. You can also practice kind of sweep picking, so down and up strokes as well as well as alternate picking, that's a, a really good thing to do. Um, cool, so that's basically just showing you major seven arpeggio, C, A, G, E, D shapes in D major and B major, and obviously feel free to practice these loads of keys. So if you'd like to get hold of the, um, the kind of the PDF that I've made for this with all the chords you can see in green, all the root notes, all the suggested fingering, um, so these will be available on my website, jsmusical.co.uk, so you can get these in PDF, the PDF and also get either a guitar profile. Um, so I'll sort of show you a clip on the screen now of, uh, you know, so if you wanted to practice all those examples I've, I've done, I've, I've put those in Guitar Pro so you can sort of slow it down, speed it up, loop it, and, and really improve it. And if you just get stuck with some of my diagrams, you've got it all in Guitar Pro or in Tab PDF format as well. So you can either get it in Tab PDF or Guitar Pro uh, with the, and both of them will come with this PDF as well. So Hopefully you find this useful. Our pitchers are a really good thing to learn. Um, it just helps you to really make sense of everything and it's not just a, a maze. So thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and hit that bell icon for notifications if you haven't already. Any comments, just let me know if you've enjoyed the video. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time. Cheers, bye.